Wood Nation, what's going on, bros and bros? Look, man, this is Wood Jr. We trust all is well. Wife is over there getting prepared for the sermon notes that she's about to bless you guys with. Man, listen, we just want to thank everyone for your prayers, man. God is good. We uh, were not affected by the flood, but there are other people that were affected by the flood. So, man, prayers up to those people, man. I mean, these apparently savannah has broken a new record with the flooding of the uh the rivers and some of the streets man i think like they said in 2020 it was like seven feet high now this time it's like 11 plus feet high you know to the point they had to block off streets and everything of that matter so yeah the rain really affected a lot of people man you know they had to rescue people from their homes but man two thumbs up thank god man that everybody's all right and our church man what we're doing is that we are also blessing people man with necessities uh canned goods etc and we have also joined with other churches as well to do this as well because man you know think about it yes our church is here somebody else's church is there but at the end of the day it is a team effort what is the acronym of team together everyone accomplish more so yeah man our church is doing really big things man to god be the glory to help others because that's what it's all about and man we have the perfect name for our church compassion christian that's what we show that's who we are that's what we do right as far as my bike equal man i checked on it yesterday apparently they have to put the uh rotors in the front they have to take the old ones off put the new ones on and then for the rear i ask if they can uh re-bleed re-bleed the rear brakes because you guys i read the comments where you guys are saying that's possibly could be the issue so hopefully they're gonna do that as well because i'm ready to get on the road to test my bike out i don't want it to be close towards us me and my wife leaving and then the bike is ready so i did speak with the manager you know because i did read a lot of you guys comments pertaining to the other video just so i did speak to the manager and he says he's on it he's getting some things together so definitely to get the bike back to me a lot sooner so we'll see what happens but all right y'all i'm about to give it to wifey so wifey can go ahead share the sermon notes good morning wood nation this is wifey hope y'all are doing well happy sunday <laughs> Our future lead pastor, Marcus Johnson, led the sermon today, and the sermon topic was Become Like Jesus, based out of John chapter 15, verse 12, John chapter 17, and Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> so Matthew chapter 16, verses 17 and 18 reads, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So this passage reveals that um, Simon Barjona, who um, Jesus changed the name to Peter, um, showed that he knew who Jesus was what Jesus is and Jesus is the Messiah he said son of the living God and so Jesus was very pleased with um, Peter's response because it was correct but also because his father our father in heaven revealed that to um, to Peter who Jesus is and based on um, Jesus response I mean excuse me based on Peter's response um, that reflected his faith in Jesus Christ and it's based on that belief who Jesus is that is the rock that Jesus will build his church on so in other words um, the church um, or Jesus who Jesus is is the foundation of the church and Jesus is the Messiah the son of the living God the pastor referenced the book called God's Big Picture, and I would like to read a brief description of that book. And it's from um, the author Vaughn Roberts. The description based out of uh, Amazon said 66 books were written by 40 people over nearly 2,000 years in two languages and different, several different genres a worldwide bestseller published in countless sizes and bindings, translations, and languages, sworn by in court, fought, fought over by religious people, quoted in arguments. The Bible is clearly no ordinary book. How can you begin to read and understand it as a whole? 
In this excellent overview, Vaughn Roberts gives you the big picture, showing how the different parts of the Bible fits together under the theme of the kingdom of God, provides both the encouragement and the tools to help you read the Bible with confidence and understanding, and points you to the Bible's supreme subject, Jesus Christ, and the salvation God offers through him. And I wanted to reference this book, um, not only because the pastor referenced it, but also for us to see God's big picture, the purpose of the church, which is to, among many things, um, witness God's love, God's Bible, and who God is, who the Son of God is to the world. And this is God's plan, both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessing because they belong to Christ Jesus. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom and its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 6, 9 through 11. And so just as our Father, our God, um, revealed his eternal plan through Jesus, he can use us, and he does use us every day, to witness to um, those around us. To witness even to, if you've been watching the Olympics, you know, there are several athletes who said that they're being used, Christian athletes who said that they're being used by God to witness. This is an opportunity for them to do so and reach out to many cultures, um, nations, races, groups, and share the good news of Jesus Christ. So what an opportunity to spread the gospel worldwide, you know, through the Olympics. C.S. Lewis, a well-known Christian author, said, spread through all time and space and rooted in eternity, terrible as an army with banners. And what he's referring to is the Bible. <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> the good news, witnessing it, spreading it through all times, all nations, all people. Who we are determines what we do. Interestingly, it's, it doesn't say um, what we do determines who we are, but it's who we are. Our character in Christ de determines every day what we do, the choices that we make, whether we make it the choices for Christ, uh, whether we choose to be obedient to God, or whether we decide to do what we want to do. Um, hold a grudge, for example, or be upset, or gossip, um, or retaliate, you know. Um, what we um, do is not who we are, but it's who we are as Christ followers determines what we do, share the gospel, um, show hospitality, love our enemies, etc. Basically, um, who we are in Christ, who Christ is, is who we can be and choose to be each and every day. John chapter 13 verse 34 reads, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are, are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. John chapter 13, verse 35. Because in this world, just as in Jesus' time, um, loving your neighbors is something, or excuse me, loving your enemies is something uh, that is just counterculture. 
Yet Jesus Christ did it each and every day. He loved those who hated him. He loved those who had uh, different expectations for him to be the king, to overthrow um, and become their king, but not as, as Jesus became, um, but as the world wanted him to be. But yet Jesus followed the example of Christ. I mean, followed the example of God. And uh, he um, followed God each and every day by loving, um, which was counterculture. And so likewise, as believers of Jesus Christ, we're commanded to do the same, to love God and to love others. And that's actually our church, church motto, to love God and to love others. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 reads, Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Very counterculture as well to forgive, to um, turn the other cheek, to let it go, because God fights our battles each and every day anyway. And he does it so well, <laughs> better than we could ever um, think or imagine. So let it go, forgive, and move on. And in closing, the pastor had um, this image that I like to share with y'all. Oh, oh, nice. Wood Nation, Rose and Royce. Oh, okay. Oh, look at the. Okay. Awesome. Oh, all right. This is a good exercise. Go for it, babe. Okay. So I like to fill in the blanks here, and you can fill it in based on the list here. And that could be something that uh, perhaps that you're struggling with, something that God's put in your heart to do that maybe you've avoid doing. Um, for example, forgive one another just as Jesus forgives us. And that could be to somebody who's hurt you, um, disappointed you, maybe didn't meet your expectation, um, talked about you, gossiped to others about you, and that it's something that you're struggling with, struggling to do, because it's hard to forgive them and to let go when you're constantly thinking about it over and over again, for example. And that is a hard thing to do, to forgive, um, to forgive others who, who have hurt us, um, or have done us wrong. But it wasn't hard for Jesus to do toward us. It wasn't hard for Jesus to, and it still isn't hard for Jesus to forgive us of our sins when we confess to Jesus. And um, so the, the one individual that you may have a hard time or struggle with forgiving, they may never come to you and apologize or ask for forgiveness or even think that they've done anything wrong. But because we are Christ followers and we are forgiven people, and um, because our sins have been forgiven um, by Jesus Christ, he empowers us to forgive others. Honor one another, just as Jesus honors us. That's a big thing. Honor, respect, uh, show love, show kindness. In other words, um, embody the characteristics of, of Jesus Christ. Um, as, a, as a Christ follower, we need to know who Christ is so that we can become like Christ each and every day. And God's Word shows us who Christ is. Uh, God's Word shows us who our Father is. And we, in turn, can be just like Christ in the decisions that, um, that we make. So I encourage you, and I'm speaking to myself as well, to be like Christ each and every day. And um, notice, be, or being or becoming like Christ in turn uh, comes out and um, tells the world through our actions who lives in us. And that's our um, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Hey, man. And look at that shirt, y'all, wifey wearing. I had a plan, mm -hmm. but God had a better one. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. High five, man. Awesome job. Thank you, love. Woo. Hopefully next time y'all see us, we'll be on equal. But if not, we're going to still get that word.